thanks very much for, for coming. Uh, it's great to see such a, a great crowd here today um, as part of our, our, our series of inviting each of the candidates in to address you. Um, we, we have invited all of the candidates and Michael D, uh, we're, we're delighted to have him present here today. Um, and uh, I suppose there's no point to lay in it. You're all, this is the man you're dying to see. So uh, without uh, further ado, can we show a massive round of applause and a warm welcome please to uh, Michael D. Higgins. <laughs> Well, Ultron and Altius, Ultron and Kalosh, they got a mila makia sattra, kira chiat, agas kukla fakila ro. Tal gai gata. Now, Kamala Shen Tashitaba that Gani Usad her boss Emila, Ak, is better of Phila Rasher Shin of Okoj. Anyway, I'm very grateful, President of the Students' Union and President of the College for the invitation and all of you for being here. I'm not quite sure, uh, uh, did, I'm a bit overwhelmed by the large crowd, but I'd better get, start getting used to that, I suppose. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and I, I, I do welcome this opportunity about saying something in the last days of the campaign for the presidency. I stood for the presidency because, and I prepared to stand, a full year before the whole process started. I decided not to stand for the doll. I said, I have 25 years in the doll, nine years in the Senate. I have been a minister, cabinet minister. I was president of the Council of Cultural Ministers. But I was saying, if I am to make this a good campaign, I need to be able to devote myself fully to it. And I began preparing and thinking about it. And my view is very, fun to, is very, very, very simple about this. We are in a hurtful place in our country, a place where there has been and there remains a great deal of fear and insecurity. We are at the tail end of what was called the Celtic Tiger. There were many good things created in the original push to creating economic selflessness. But sadly, those opportunities of turning what was surplus into a social economy was lost or squandered or was never centre stage. In fact, a very small version of economic theory and a very small number of people turned what was possible, the possibilities, into a nightmare of speculation which brought benefit in the short term of a false kind to some people, but has left as a legacy an extraordinary amount of insecurity in relation to employment, in relation to property that is now less than 50% of its value, market stress, and so on. And one of the things that turns out in the polls is that this shows when you see, when you see the people who moved out of Dublin, for example, and travel long distances in, and so forth. They are maybe among the most stressed people in our population. Now, I want to say this to young people in particular. Is that there is nothing inevitable about that. I said in elsewhere when I was speaking to Spoon Out, when I look back at it, people are always asking me about my age. I was born on the 18th of April, 1941. There's nothing I or the world can do about it. <laughs> now, the fact of the matter is, one of the advantages about this is this, is that there is an opportunity if you had been like me. I was a, a somebody who was born to a family who never went near third level. And after second level, worked in a factory, then as a clerk in the ESP, and then later to university, and I became a university teacher. But the most important thing about education is that education must be emancipatory. Education must set you free. But it mustn't just set you free to be useful to any narrow version of the economy. Education must let you be free to be in a fully developed sense. And you can't do it on your own. You do it cooperatively and collectively. Those are the values that were lost in that end period when we lost the opportunities of the Celtic Tiger. So you must look at the values of where they came from. And you know, we all identify now with certain bondholders and bankers and so forth. But behind every one of those were a set of intellectual ideas that said an unregulated market is possible, an unregulated market is best. There were those who said that markets were rational. They, did prove they were in relation to people 
You know, when you think of Friedrich van Hayek, when you think of all of those others, ideas were taken out and they rose to prominence. So you got a single version of the economy. And an inevitable species suggested to people that was entirely false. And it created the misery. So what you have to do if you are serious is you have to look at the values that created the nightmare and understand that you must abandon them and move on to the other values. That collectively, cooperatively, in responding to our greatest problem now, 424,000 people unemployed, and it is that our greatest problem. We need a cooperative response. And you draw new values for that. Something that says the radical individualism that defined the person in terms of what they had accumulated in wealth was a miserable version of the person. But also that the person, for example, to replace it with a kind of inclusive citizenship. We are in a republic that is in formation, not one that is finished. We stated in the 1916 Declaration to cherish all the children of the nation equally. We fail to protect children. That's just only one step in the long journey to, in fact, achieving children's rights. It is possible, therefore, to have an inclusive society, one in which you will all be proud of, in which there will not be fear, but all of the powers and possibilities, the emancipatory freedoms of living collectively, cooperatively, recognising the radical dignity of each other. It's a wonderful prospect, and our country can change, and our country will change, and the version of the economy that will replace the speculative one will be one that will take into consideration not only how the person fits in the economy for one version, but how the economy can respond and link itself to community and to nation and to people, drawing on heritage that we have remembered collectively, and also the imagination which is present in individuals and groups of people, on Sauliot, as we call it. And I want to say I am incredibly positive about what's achievable here. In communities, the necessary transformation of Ireland is already underway. People driven back to the real economy are doing new things in artists and food, in technology and science, looking for the combination of culture and science that should never have been divided. And they also, as well as that, the interesting thing is foreign direct investment is increasing in Ireland, as well as that exports are increasing. But what's wrong is in the domestic economy. What we need now is a mind of Ireland and an Irishness that is entirely different, suitable for a country that is coming out of healing and moving into a new version of itself, where we'll be proud to say, we won't strut all over Europe saying to people, you could be like us if you tried. We will instead of that be looking at a version of ourselves that says, we are people at home that take care that we are people who recognize each other's needs. We have built our, our republic. We are building our republic on the decencies. We are building it on the possibilities of our people. And because we are like that, we will be people that will be visited. We will be people that will be welcome everywhere. And I want to say that for seven years. I will work to recognize those transformative shoots that are everywhere in Ireland going on towards inclusion. And it's about, in the life that we have, let us have an Irishness to be proud of. And I will go abroad and draw on my own record and my own connections, speaking of human rights and whatever. And I will always say, I will always say this, it is when the inevitabilities are questioned that you are really, as Raymond Williams said, taking your first steps in a journey of hope. There is great hope here. And I know and I want think that you will all have a wonderful future. And you will do it all the better when you take care of yourselves. And when we realize as well that we are not just a simple island, that we have a, the future of Europe, the fragile project that Jürgen Habermas talks about, is a social Europe, a kind of region that where there will be rights respected and in the global economy will be a model. That's exciting. And anyway, to finish, let me say as well, when it's all over, it will be celebratory. Celebratory of endless possibilities. That's what I think is ahead, and it's wonderful. And I invite you all to be part of it. All I can tell you, 
I will give the best these seven years of my life. Every kind of skill I have, every ounce of energy I have, at home and abroad, to creating what I believe will be the real republic. And when we come in the centenaries that will all take place between 1912 and 1916, we will be able to say <laughs> one thing that you will be able to say too. We had a campaign for the presidency. And wasn't it wonderful that it wasn't a presidency that was marred by ageism? Wasn't it a presidency that enabled us to take off into a new place? Shannon Rathathar Shul Agamhain, August Tugim Quimity Vela. Use all your friends and your contacts. And in being not just, as I say, be the arrow, not the target. Use that social media to contact your friends and tell them Michael D was here and on Thursday he needs your vote. Thank you very much.